To paraphrase Hunter S. Thompson, when you get locked into a serious beer collection, the tendency is to push it as far as you can. Cheers. Son of a bitch! Give me a drink! Welcome back to the Tap Takeover Podcast, and we've got a special bonus episode for you. We're going to be talking about our experience at Wisconsin Beer Lovers Fest. We all attended. Andy actually had a booth uh, for the physics group. Uh, Andy, you want to tell us about that? So I'm the brand ambassador for the physics beer system. We kind of do a little collaboration where the Tap Takeover Podcast takes over the booth with the physics draft beer system, and then we offer out special samples to our fans who come up and show us that they like us on social media. So what, what were some of those beers this time around? We did Big Hugs by Half Acre, which we also did at Stein and Dine. Always, always a favorite yep. of the podcast. We did the uh, Abyss 2016. We did Black Friday 2016. Always a favorite of the podcast. <laughs> and we did the Tequila Barrel Aids The Promise by Central Waters. Yeah, all, all four very, very tasty beers. I know our fans who showed up were very happy to drink them. Yeah, we're, we're going to get into uh, the audio that we took from the festival, talking with some of the brewers in just a minute. But I just wanted to kind of go around the table and uh, let, let's talk about our general impressions of the festival. Well, overall... I, I just thought the festival was pretty cool. I, I, a couple of things I, I liked. The food was fantastic. Yeah, the Re- food was really great. Each tent had a food option and the beer option, so that was great. What I did not like, and I kind of liked at the same time, was all the beer was pretty much anything you can go get at discount. So everything was accessible for people. There's nothing rare, but what we also like about beer is getting that rare stuff. So it was kind of torn about that, but overall it was fun. The weather was great. I don't know. Andy, what do you think? general impressions is it's a, it's a fun beer festival it's done and for those of you that don't know where it is it's in the center of Bayshore Mall in Glendale uh, and it's basically just tent city set up on both the streets and in, in, in town square there in the middle it's basically all the craft breweries and a bunch of restaurants and you're focusing on the state of Wisconsin it's pretty popular it's been going on this is the eighth year um, and what were some of your uh, favorite things at the event well let's just say that uh, Bayshore Mall is uh, it's kind of an open courtyard kind of a mall so that was kind of nice to, to be outside drinking some beer on a nice day beautiful beautiful event uh, Jim what, what was your general impressions of the event so I love that it's Wisconsin beer centric so you got an opportunity to sample breweries from across the whole state including La Crosse Green Bay way up north that don't distribute at all and you got an opportunity to taste and sample some of their beers you know and there were actually some rare beers but you had to ask and you had to know who to talk to there were secret beers Pro tip. <laughs> so what were your favorites of those? Uh, so actually mine was an old friend of the podcast, Badger State. Our good friend John uh, was sampling, and he had a couple specials behind the bar that he at least shared with a couple of us. One of them was uh, the Kiwi Lager. That was a light, refreshing, fruit-centric beer, and it was very good. There were quite a few new breweries and, you know, a lot of friends of the podcast that we were able to meet. Uh, one of the new ones for me was called Dead Bird Brewing. Uh, they don't have a location just yet. They're, they're contract brewing right now. Listen to the interview. He's got some really good information, and they had one of the best beers, I think, at the fest. Andy, I know you were a big fan of this one, too. I agree completely. It was uh, the bean water, right? Yeah, the uh, the coffee stout. Yeah, yeah, really fantastic. Jesus, what what was your favorite beer at the at the festival? Yeah, like I said, for me, I I don't know if I had a favorite beer. I just thought everything was kind of it was just very accessible. I feel like I've tried most things there. I, nothing really stood out. It's not a bad thing, but it, I just look at the whole festival as a whole. I, I would say I would that agree so a little sad. bit with Jesus is that there was nothing really challenging as we're going to see upcoming in Firkenfest where you have a lot of challenging beers to your palate. For me, again, it was the range of breweries throughout Wisconsin. And unless you travel to La Crosse or you travel to Marinette or you travel to Potosi, you're, you're just not going to be able to access those beers. All right, so how about we talk about favorite moments at the fest? Did you at least have one of those, Jesus? Did you have a favorite moment, a, a favorite interview? 
Well, it's always good to catch up with Henry, and when you catch up with Henry and Russ <laughs> from Lakefront, that's a win. So that was really cool, and it happened towards the end of yeah. our interview series. And um, towards the end of the festival, yeah, and, it was a uh, treat. It'll be yeah. at the end of the episode. So yeah, it was stay a really, tuned. really cool to catch up with those guys, and they gave us uh, some good info. So I, well, not just some good info. Some breaking news, yeah, which, that, which right. is what we—it's what we yeah. we gather, it's what exactly. we treasure here on the podcast. Yep. So stay tuned to the end of the episode for some very special news from both Henry at Bobcraft and Russ Klish at Lakefront Brewing. Well, I would actually say too, I enjoyed the uh, interviews we did with Ale Asylum and Oso too, which are hopefully two future interviews that we laid the groundwork for at, at that festival. I give a shout out to the new My Turn series from Lakefront too. The Dylan was that Dortmunder was very delicious, easy drinking summer beer, especially on a hot day. Jim, any uh, any favorite moment at the fest? Uh, besides the uh, Russ and Henry moment, which was fantastic, just getting to meet and explore beers with uh, some of these brewers that we don't normally get from out of state. Chance from Pearl Street uh, was a great guy to talk to, and we get the, an opportunity to listen to him a little bit later. No, it was great. And actually, it really hit home like our little thing we got going on here with the Tap Takeover podcast. It was just really cool seeing these guys, and they really embraced us as we were walking by. Hey, come over and say, you know, say hi to us. And it was just neat. It was really cool. One of my favorite moments, uh, I got to meet Max finally from Eagle Park Brewing. So we, we met two of the brewers or two of the owners of that brewery. Max was the, the person who wasn't there. They, I'll be honest, they talked a little smack about Max. So I got to meet Max, and I told him, hey, we're going to be back, and, you know, you can talk a little smack about these guys. But the time Timing didn't quite work out, so when we uh, when we got there, Max wasn't there. They didn't talk any more smack, but Max didn't get his opportunity. <laughs> maybe so, on the next one. Maybe on the next one. Exactly. It's it was a fantastic event. We're looking forward to the next one next year. And now let's get into the interviews and actually hear what these folks have to say. Okay, this is Alex and Andy here from the Tap Takeover Podcast. We're here at Wisconsin Beer Lovers Fest. How are you doing, Andy? Pretty good. All right, so we're here with... Hathaway Dilba of Ale Asylum. And uh, we are super happy to talk to you guys. We're ready to branch into Madison and start talking to you guys. What is one of the best beers that you guys have brought with you so our listeners can get a taste of what you guys have? Oh, that's like asking me what my favorite kit is. That's a hard one. Um, Well, I can say right off the bat that Napalm Bunny Double IPA that we brought today is right now one of our top-selling seasonals. So this is an imperialized version of the Velveteen, Velveteen Habit, Habit, which we've actually featured on our, our beer news segment. Do you want to? It's the beer of the week on our beer news segment. It's one of our favorite beers. Mine too. Actually, Milwaukee Magazine voted it best IPA in Wisconsin a couple years back. Well deserved. Thank well you. Deserved. So uh, tell us about the brewery. What can our listeners experience uh, when they come out to see you guys? Well, when you come out to Madison, we're actually right by the airport. We have a beautiful tasting room in the front with a full menu. We have a two-story beer garden outside. And we do brewery tours on Sundays. And what do you think about the uh, the event going on today? I love it. I love supporting the Wisconsin Brewers Guild. They do so much for us, and I love the collaboration with Draft Magazine. We're looking forward to meeting up with you at your uh, ta- your brew pub and your brewery in Madison for a full interview coming Me up too. soon. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Awesome. Cheers. So this is Andy and Alex here from the Tap Takeover Podcast here at the Wisconsin Beer Lovers Festival. And right now we're here with Jackson from Eagle Park. How's it going? Pretty good. Yeah, good to see you again, man. How, see you. How, how have things been going since the interview? Things have been going great. Uh, we just brewed our second batch of Loop Station Monday, so we're going to be ramping up. We just hired a, a brand new sales rep, so we're going to be out there even more. We're brewing our set list, our year-round IPA, on July 7th, so that'll be out to the market. And then in the fall and September, we're actually brewing Immortal Soul, but it's going to be all Galaxy Hops. Over four, well over four pounds per barrel. Double IPA. It's going to be in cans too. It's, it's going to be the first beer that we launch in cans as a moral soul. You're speaking my language. Break that for our beer news. Yes, it's so, going to be awesome. What's been the fan favorite here today at Eagle Park? Here so far, it's the, the two beers actually. It's our Huey Lewis and the Booze, which I we believe we talked about before. So it's uh, this this barrel that we got from Hawthorne. Well, the coffee beans were actually aged in Heaven Hill barrels. It's uh, actually it came out a little boozy, a little bit more of a bourbon note than than even the last batch, which I believe it, I'm blanking on the, what it was, but it was a Madison distillery. It starts with a J. And then we have uh, Do You Like Jazz, which is a, a brand new beer that we just uh, released, which is our double IPA, all Belgian imported malts, Pilsner, Caravian, 
Um, and then we hop it with over four pounds per barrel of Citra hops. And then um, it's a hybrid yeast strain. It's 40% Belgian strong ale yeast and then 60% of our house California ale yeast. So just enough of that really nice Belgian character, but it's still subdued enough to still let the Citra come through. Nice. That, that's the one that definitely caught my eye this year. So, Thank you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. This is, uh, is this your first beer event that you guys have been to this year? This is our first Beer Lovers. Okay. So we were at World of Beer last week, or two weeks ago. Um, we did the Keg Killer events. We did the Summer on Taps at uh, the Micro. I believe we've done one or two others, but this is like our first outdoor summer beer festival, and it's been incredible. So. Nice. Well, hey, we're happy to have you here, and uh, we can't wait to check you guys out, you know, in, in, in a little bit of distance and see how you guys are doing. Thank you very much. Also, awesome. thanks, thanks so much. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, cheers. Alex and Andy here from the Tap Takeover Podcast, and we're here with... Alex and Andy here with the Tap Takeover Podcast, and we're here with... Dale Charbonneau from Tyranina Brewing Company. So, Dale, tell us about the event today. How, how has it been going for Tyranina Brewing? Oh, beautiful. I mean, the table's been packed. This might be the festival I've ever seen with the most amount of people at it. I just did beer camp in Chicago, nationally run festival, beer lovers festival, five times the size, and a shit ton more enjoyable. So what's been going on with Tyranina lately? We hear you got something super sweet coming down the pipeline. Oh, uh, do we ever, man. So this year, it's been our principal point to try to do one barrel-aged beer a month. So far, we've been on par. The sixth one just came out, being the sixth month. Draft only this time. We didn't get label submission in time, so it's not going to go bottles. But everyone's going to be really excited. This is the summer barrel-aged beer of the year, Imperial Saison Asian Port Wine Barrels. The Saison is so complex. The biscuity notes that come off on the malts, light body and then that great must of this port just comes through. I want I want bombers to drink on a boat. <laughs> I, I tell you what, uh, Jim on the podcast has been saying for years that you guys are underrated and undervalued in Wisconsin. Well, thank you very much. Thank yeah. you very much. We absolutely need to get out to talk to you guys as soon as possible. And we'll we set that up. We just built a new patio. Everybody feel free to come out. Tyronina's patio. If you've been there before, it used to be just a corner off the brew pub. It's the entire length of the building. Oh it's got God. about 25 more tables. we got a giant chess and checker board set built right into the concrete. The chess set's on its way. I think we got delivery in August, but there'll be two foot sized chess pieces. Nice. Are you guys doing uh, live music and that kind of oh, stuff? Oh, every, every Friday and Saturday. Live music starts at 7, goes till 10. Each each time we have a live band come out, there's going to be a food truck that corresponds with it, so we put it on the patio so everybody gets grub, has beer, great tunes, man. I don't know about you, Alex, but I want a fridge full of the Coco Poco. <laughs> Coco Poco was our biggest hit last fall, man. I, I, have, I have no authorization to say what's coming out this winter but I do know that Coco Poco was a personal favorite of us brewers and what people don't maybe know a little insider information is that was the smallest barrel aged beer batch we made last year because one of our rum barrels split oh, wow. so instead of risking the Break, infection and blending breaking it news. with the rest we had to dump it just to be able to maintain quality of the rest of the beer the responsible thing to do man you know so this year hopefully we'll have a full batch of Coco Poco but again there's no promises made I don't handle production that's above my pay grade <laughs> well, thanks i just so put my input in <laughs> well thanks so much for talking to hey us. man thanks again as always you guys are great all right this is Seuss with alex and andy with a tap takeover podcast and we are here with my name is chris i'm the brewmaster at second salem brewing in whitewater and what are your thoughts of the uh, beer fest so far i think it's pretty good like any other beer fest it's well organized there's a great variety of food beverage non-alcoholic food and as always it's a nice hot wisconsin day so what's been the fan favorite for you from your brewery booth today we've been a little all over the place our wild man hefenweiss the german style hefenweiss has been very popular it's a very seasonal beer so with it being warm it's a lighter beer refreshing. We brought our Beast of Bray Road Amber, took third at the World Beer Cup last year, so that's always a fan favorite that we always try and push. And people's palates are still hot for IPAs, so we've got our Bone Orchard IPA, which is more of a citric forward IPA, so it's not scorching your tongue with the pine needle flavor right away, so it's 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 got that juicy fruitness that makes it drinkable. Awesome. So we can't c wait to come out to your brewery and actually talk to you and get a full interview in. But uh, for our listeners who aren't familiar with you, what, what can they expect when they come to your brewery? So we're Second Salem Brewing. The name Second Salem is, is historic to Whitewater, located in downtown Whitewater, Wisconsin. Uh, and we, we focus and operate currently as a brew pub. So we have anywhere from 
eight to as many as 13 beers of our own on tap at a time, depending on how uh, motivated and how flawless things go in the brewery. If things go wrong, it can be a few less. Good variety of food from burgers and appetizers and a few entrees to, to good quality locally brewed beers. Well, I'll tell you what, Andy and I both went to school out at Whitewater. So it's it's amazing to see an, a, a really good brewery coming, you know, coming up in that area. Good. I appreciate to hear that. Um, please come back, give us a visit. One of our goals for this summer by the end of July is to hopefully start getting a few of our beers and bombers and getting some southeastern Wisconsin distribution going, a little bit of Madison, Milwaukee area. So hopefully we'll uh, give reason for you guys to come out and join us and uh, your listeners come out and give us a try as well. Awesome. We'll be in touch. Great right, to meet you. Guys. Great. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Really appreciate it. All right, this is Alex and Andy here from the Tap Takeover Podcast, and we're talking with... Andrew Enders. From Oso Brewing. Uh, we're big fans of you guys. Uh, we can't wait to get out and talk with you. So tell us a little bit about the brewery for our listeners who may not be familiar. We are from Plover, Wisconsin. We are all about muddling the style of beer. We don't want to have very style-specific beers. We're all about creating new beers, having fun, and making flavors that work that people enjoy. So what has been your favorite or uh, most popular beer here at the festival so far? Today we have Scarlet Letter, which is an awesome beer. It's our sour beer. It's been aged on oak barrels, and then cranberries have been added at the end of the fermentation. It's got a really nice pucker up sour tartness to it overwhelming so kind of it also pieces to the mass what's what are your thoughts on the wisconsin beer lovers festival today well uh the wisconsin brewers guild knows how to have fun so this is a really good festival uh sprecher they're great hosts this this has been a really good festival in the years past a lot of good beer a lot of good people obviously location's great Uh, it's a good time you know the weather's holding out for us real well it's cloudy so it's not too hot beautiful summer day. Well, thanks so much for talking with us. You're welcome. All right, this is Alex with Andy and Jesus from the Tap Takeover Podcast, and we're here with... Jeremy Hatch from Dead Bird Brewing Company. All right, so Jeremy, tell us about the brewery. You guys are brand spanking new. We're brand spanking new, yeah, when it comes to like Milwaukee. We actually started about a year and a half ago. We got into our first place December 2015. We were in Madison, Eastside Madison originally, and now we uh, actually tomorrow, we're actually doing our first batch at Mobcraft Beer right here in you know, Walker's Point. We finally just dropped off our first uh, cases of beer uh, in Milwaukee and in Waukesha. So we're, we're excited to start getting into the Milwaukee market right now. Awesome. And what are your thoughts of the beer festival so far? Oh, it's amazing. I mean, first of all, like, the location is phenomenal, right? I mean, the weather's been amazing, you know. The breweries that, that have come by and, and the fact that it's part of the Wisconsin Brewers Guild, like, phenomenal, right? Um, the food is crazy good. Really, really no complaints, right? So we're hopefully looking forward to an uh, in-depth interview with you sometime in the future, but for now we want to know what's been the fan favorite today? Probably probably the bean water. That's uh, Imperial Coffee Stout that we're doing right now. Uh, we did that specifically just for this event. It's kind of an experimental beer that we've been putting together, but people really liking it, so maybe it'll end up being on a shelf someday. So It, it, it probably should be. I, I think it's my favorite <laughs> at the fest so far. Case, boys? Yeah, it's, it's been, I think, all three of our favorites here. here Definitely, here. without a doubt. Nice. Awesome. Well, nice. hey, thanks for uh, taking some time for us. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Alex and Andy here with the Tap Takeover Podcast, here with fan favorite Ryan from Central Waters. How are you doing, Ryan? Good. How are you guys today? Doing great. How? Uh, what do you think about this uh, festival so far? Yeah, so is this your first time is your first time here for you guys? No, no. no we cool. were here last year, too. Yeah, so this is always one of our favorite fests of the year. Obviously, the Brewers Guild in Wisconsin, they put on a few different beer fests throughout the year, but this is the largest one, only Wisconsin breweries. The thing I like the best about this fest, obviously, it's a pretty cool atmosphere, you know, outside at Bayshore. Or mall, but there's kind of just as many food vendors as there are beer vendors, so it keeps everybody a little more even keel, a little more. They stay, they stay hydrated, they stay fed, so everybody's happy, and yeah, it's a good time. Awesome, man. So, what's been the fan favorite from Central Waters today? Well, interestingly enough, so you know, Central Waters, I think we're definitely known for the barrel aged beers. You know, some of our bigger illumination, you know, big styles like that. Honey Blondes is always the first beer we kick at a beer festival. Today 
Today we were pouring uh, Rifts, which is our new IPA. We had Mud Puppy Porter, Honey Blondes, and Summerillo, which is our seasonal right now. It's an India Pale Lager. And the only thing that's kicked so far is Honey Blondes. Uh, the rest of the kegs are all really close, so I think we might be out of beer uh, before 5 o'clock. But yeah, Honey Blonde is always the fan favorite at something like this because it's really good, really light, easy drinking, kind of hot weather beer. So, so uh, for our listeners, uh, we did a special tap tapping today of uh, The Promise. Oh, the yeah. Tequila Barrel Aged Beer. Yeah. Uh, so that was just at uh, just recently we tapped that one. Tell us, our, tell our viewers uh, what they can expect from that beer. Sure. Yeah. So I mentioned our, our barrel aging program. For anybody who doesn't know, um, we're the largest producer of barrel aged beer in the state of Wisconsin. So we're talking about barrel aged beer. It's kind of uh, first use spirits barrels, predominantly bourbon. So we source those barrels, kind of work through a broker, middleman, uh, get them from the distilleries. So we predominantly use bourbon. We get some rye whiskey barrels. We've done some rum barrels in the past some wine barrels but the beer you're talking about was aged in tequila barrels so we got a really small amount of some tequila barrels about a year ago and brewed three different beers one beer called El Ganador which is an imperial stout with coffee and cocoa nibs aged in tequila barrels one beer is called Bloody Sunrise which is an imperial blonde ale with blood orange and agave in tequila barrels and then the beer you spoke of The Promise is an American strong ale aged in tequila barrels it was our two owners Anello and Paul and our lead brewer Simon each kind of brewed a different beer, sort of an internal competition kind of thing. Um, and I think the promise actually, they're just going based off of like internet ratings for the beers, like Beer Advocate. And I think the promise is actually leading leading the way right now. Yeah, limited release beer bottles were only available for sale at the brewery. They might actually still have them for sale. And then kegs kind of come out for special events and stuff. So you might see uh, you might see a keg or two still pop up around town for tap takeovers and beer dinners and that kind of thing. Well, we can't wait to come out and talk to you guys soon and, awesome. uh, and get an interview on the books. Cheers. Right, Thanks, cheers. guys. This is Alex and Andy here with the Tap Takeover Podcast at Wisconsin Beer Lovers Fest here at Bayshore Mall. Uh, and we're speaking with... Uh, this is Nick with uh, Third Space Brewing. So, Nick, tell us about Third Space Brewing. For our uh, listeners who aren't familiar, what what can they expect when they come check you guys out? Sure. So we're on 15th at St. Paul uh, in Milwaukee. We're about 10 months old, and we do a lot of hoppy stuff. What's been the fan favorite here today? For us, our Milwaukee Mule. That's our sour wheat with lime and ginger. You know, our take on the flavors of a Moscow Mule. And it's been, it's been going over pretty well. Barrel's getting low. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so what do you think about Wisconsin Beer Lovers Fest? What, uh, uh, how, how, what kind of fun have you guys been having here today? Uh, this is one of the uh, best fests uh, that Milwaukee does. I've been coming here as a, as a patron myself since since the beginning. And, you know, the crowd's always great. Uh, they're knowledgeable about beer, but they're here to have fun and here to taste a lot of good beer. Awesome. So it's one of our one of our favorites for sure. Well, we can't wait to come out and uh, have a conversation and learn all about the brewery. Absolutely. Awesome. Cheers. Cheers. Alex and Andy here with the Tap Takeover Podcast at Wisconsin Beer Lovers Fest, and we are here with... Matt Jansen, author of State of Craft Beer. All right, so tell us about this book. It's a little bit of a coffee table kind of book, uh, all about uh, breweries in Wisconsin. Yeah, so I quit my job back in August of 2015 to go around the state and learn more about the beer industry in Wisconsin. So I started taking photos at breweries and hop yards and barley fields. I learned a lot about the industry and took a shit ton of photos. And am I allowed to swear on this one? Oh, absolutely. Okay. We encourage it. It shows you how raw products become a final product that ends up in your hand. So how awesome was it that all the breweries got on board and are just pushing this book for you? It was critical in the success of the book. I wouldn't have a book if I didn't have pre-orders from breweries. That's how I funded the production of it, which is also entirely within Wisconsin. Appleton coated paper, Nina end sheets, printed in Green Bay, bound in Germantown. If I would have went to China, I would have been able to spend a lot less on a book, but because of the support of the brewers, I was able to keep it within the state. That, so That's amazing. That's amazing. Thank well, you. We'd love to sit down with you sometime and, and get a full interview all about your story and the story behind the book and all that kind of stuff. Right on. And to close out, just, just tell our fans how they can get your book. Oh, yeah. So if you head to www.stateofcraft.beer, that's where you'll find the book. You can purchase it and you're not going to get it in time for Father's Day. I'll tell you that right <laughs> now, but that's how you get it. Perfect. Or at breweries across the state because they have purchased just plenty of copies to make this happen so we'll we'll let them take some sales too yeah so head to your local brewery and uh, check this book out it's fantastic or check this book out with some local breweries beer in your living room absolutely awesome thanks so much yep thank you
All right, this is Seuss with uh, Alex and Andy, Tap Takeover Podcast, and we are here with... Travis from Stillmank Brewing. So what are your thoughts on the beer fest so far? Uh, it's great. It's our first time being down here uh, and being involved in this event, so a great turnout. Weather has held off. People love the beer, so... Uh, so speaking of the beer, what's uh, what's been your most popular one so far today? Unfortunately, the one that was most popular, and it's unfortunate, but it's gone already, is Awesome Sauce. It was a cherry apple ale we did. Great summer beer. It was a huge hit with everybody. So what's still makes thoughts on the Wisconsin Craft Beer Lovers Festival? Overall, I'd say it's great. Great food, great turnout, great Wisconsin beers. Can't go wrong. All right, we recently sat down with Brad, had a great interview. So what's been going on with the brewery since then? Honestly, the last couple of weeks, Awesome Sauce has been a rocket ship for us. It has taken off like crazy, and we're, we're very happy with that brand. So keeping up on that demand as well as just the increase of summer sales. That's one of my favorite parts of that entire interview was when Brad talked to us about the Awesome Sauce. So, yeah, we appreciate you bringing it for some of our listeners to, to try today. All right, cheers, guys. Thanks a lot. Yeah, right, thank thanks. you. Alex Hello. Jesus and Jim here from the Tap Takeover podcast at Wisconsin Beer Lovers Fest, and we are speaking with Chance Mitchell of Pearl Street Brewery. So, for our listeners who are unaware, what is Pearl Street Brewing, and what's it like coming in there for the first time? Pearl Street Brewery is a uh, brewery in La Crosse, Wisconsin. We make a variety of different beers, ales, lagers, etc. We've been here for 18 years. This is actually uh, this is not by any means our first time here at the uh, Wisconsin Beer Lovers Fest. This is my personal first time here, and it's been a blast. I've really enjoyed it. Awesome. So what has been uh, your favorite or most popular beer that you guys have been doing today? Well, our brand new shiny New England style IPA called Rum Shaker has already cashed. We've blown through two kegs of that, so that's clearly our most popular beer so far. We entered that into the most, uh, uh, the best of contest, and I guess we placed somewhere in the neighborhood of fifth, which isn't bad amongst 40 different breweries. I'd, I'd like to do better, but uh, still nonetheless, I think that's the most popular and best beer we've had today. So what's going on with the, the brewery this summer and going forward? we got a lot of cool things coming up. Uh, so in July, we're actually releasing 17 Up, which is uh, a, a beer we actually brewed for our 17th anniversary last year. But it was popular enough, we're going to bring it back in six packs this year. It basically tastes like 7 Up. It's got a lot of lemon and lime effervescence to it. Really light, really easy drinking. Great boat beer. That's the best way to describe it. Since we're on the Mississippi River, the La Crosse River, and the Black River, that's a great uh, great thing for us to try to strive for. So th- that's coming up this summer. Other than that, we've got a lot of cool beers we're going to release this fall. But most importantly, if you look forward quite a ways into the future, uh, into next February, Winter Ball is where we will release probably in the neighborhood of five brand new, never before, never before seen Pearl Street beers at, at a party at a brewery. So it's definitely worth checking out. And what do you think of the Wisconsin Beer Lovers Festival? As you mentioned, this is my first time. Uh, I've really loved it. The food is great. I know that in La Crosse ourselves, we've got the Beer, Wine, and Cheese Fest. And one of the best things that that has is the cheese and meat tent. And this fest has kind of that same sort of food element throughout all of it, which is wonderful when you're just sitting around drinking beer all day. You need something to be able to, you know, <laughs> be able to help yourself out a little bit there. This fest does a great job of that. Good selection of beer, great selection of beer. I mean, I love Pearl Street, but don't get me wrong. If it's a fest that's good enough to get New Glarus to bring one of their R&D releases to it, it's a good fest. That's that's how you kind of measure it. Well, well said, well said. Well, uh, thank you so much for talking with us. Yeah, thank you guys for coming out and talking to us. Uh, right. And we're happy to be here. Hey, cheers. Thanks. Cheers. All right, this is Seuss along with my buddy Jimbo and Alex for the Tap Takeover Podcast. And we were sitting here at the Wisconsin Beer Lovers Fest with... Chris Squire. I'm a brewer at Carbon 4. So what are your thoughts on the uh, beer fest so far? Uh, it's pretty good. The rain just came out uh, right now. It's settling out and we still have all of our beer. So everyone's coming back and we're pouring everything up right now. What's been the, uh, the uh, festival favorite so far? So we brought a total of five beers out. Uh, we have Martian Sunrise, the red IPA. We have Idiot Farm, which is an Imperial IPA. Champagne Tortoise, English Mild. Fantasy Factory, our, our most popular flagship, which is an IPA. And then we also have Horse Face, which is a wheat pale ale. I'd say the most popular has to be uh, Idiot Farm, because we just released that a couple weeks ago. And it's to, to the market on this coming one, or Monday, actually. So That's uh, that's one of our favorites on the Tap Takeover podcast as well. We look forward to that one coming out. And we're also looking forward to uh, coming on out to the brewery and getting an interview with you guys. Yeah. Uh, so tell our listeners who aren't uh, aren't familiar with you guys, what uh, what can they expect coming to the brewery for the first time? Uh, yeah, our brewery is actually a really cool spot. Uh, we're, we're located in Ale Asylum's old spot. They ended up expanding, building a new building, and then we moved into theirs, totally gutted the place. 
place, adapted some of their equipment, like their brew house, and then their bottling line as well, which they adapted from Lagunitas. It's just really a cool spot. People are usually shocked at the, the volume that we do out of that location itself, but we do all of our packaging in our brewery, and I guess the vibe of our tap room is kind of industrial, more modern, but we have some really sweet ar- artwork displayed in the in the tap room and in the brewery, so hopefully when you guys come by, we can take you all the way. All, all around to show you everything that we have. Awesome. Looking yeah. forward to it. We want to know everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, thanks so much for talking cool. with us. No, thank you so much. All right, this is Seuss along with Alex for the Tap Takeover podcast at the Wisconsin Beer Lovers Fest. And we are here with John Bartman from Badger State Brewing Company. So, what has been the, the most popular beer for you guys today? So the Chili Gordo went over extremely well. Got jalapeno porter style, really smoky, bright smoke malt in there. Crushed it out there, great feedback. Definitely went over the best on the beer selection. All right, since the interview that we had, by the way, download that if you haven't heard it. What's been up with the uh, brewery so far? Got some great new uh, New England styles coming out. Key Lime Milkshake IPA just rolled out. We also have a pineapple New England style that just rolled out. Cran Delusion, a cranberry wheat ale. It's crushing in the market currently for seasonal for us. Great beer, very sessionable, brand new products. Calendar coming around. We have about six more offerings the next three months that will be heading your way too. Awesome, man. And thank you so much for uh, trying out that Key Lime with us. That, it, that was one of the highlights of the fest for, for the Tap Takeover podcast. That was an amazing moment. It's amazing how having you guys in house and it couldn't have gone over better. You guys are welcome here anytime. We love you guys. Awesome. So, you know, for our listeners who maybe haven't heard the interview, if you haven't, again, go listen. But uh, what what can we expect to see out at uh, out at the brewery? Sam Yanda being Sam Yanda for the most part, but <laughs> honestly, our, our brewery calendar is extremely adventurous this year. Tons of new beers our way, more than we've ever pumped out in any year prior. You're going to see some great stuff flowing out. Just had the return of Mean Green Tangerine, which is phenomenal oh, IPA awesome. style. Awesome. Tons of new beers coming your way. Liquid is golden, baby. <laughs> and uh, what do you think about the uh, Wisconsin Beer Lovers Festival so far? It's a crazy festival. People are having a great time at all walks of life here. People just having fun. Some real beer critics asking you serious questions. Great all-around crowd. Great response. Pretty amazing festival, in all honesty. All right, man. Well, really appreciate your time. And... Uh... That, that'll do it for us, man. Take yeah. it easy. Yeah, Cheers, thanks guys. So much. Cheers. All right, this is Asus along with my buddy Jimbo and Alex for the Tap Takeover podcast. And we are here at the Wisconsin Beer Lovers Fest with Scott Manning at Vintage Brewery. And uh, what are your thoughts of the uh, festival so far? It's been a really great day, man. We've had a lot of traffic. It only rained a little bit, and I just chased them under our tent, which is even better. It's been good. Been robust. Uh, big popular popular beers for us have been Hibiscus Saison and the Wit Beer, which, you know, no surprise, hot day like today. Those are winners for sure. So... Scott, you are one of the leaders on social media for Wisconsin Brewers. You created hashtag Wisconsin Beer Wednesday. How do you carry that burden throughout every day of your life? I, you know, I don't know if I'm a leader in any sense at all, even in my, my everyday life, but uh, thanks for saying so. I really appreciate that. Uh, Way Beer Wednesday is super cool. I, I hope that it catches on, and I hope people start like using it. This is a really great thing for breweries you know, to get a hold of because it's a way for you and your fan base to connect pictorially it's like a it's like a elegy of love to your beer just encourage them take a picture of your beer or you know our beer on a Wibber Wednesday hashtag it here's what we do is like we'll give you a prize so if we see you hashtagging our vintage beers on a Beer Wednesday it's like come collect you're, you're eligible for a free crowler a free growler whatever man I think it's a great way to say there's so much great beer in this state not to say forget the other states because there's a wide world of beer out there but let's make Wednesday the beer for celebrating our state it's great heritage because why not Wednesday it's hump day you're halfway through the work week also it's hump day and uh why not Wisconsinites drink on every day almost well some do well I do well I'll tell you what we're thinking along the same lines because every episode of the tap takeover podcast comes out Wednesday morning we're getting you ready for the rest of the week and into the weekend so uh, tell us, for anybody who's uh, not initiated, what, what can they expect coming into Vintage Brewing first time in? All right, so first off, you know, we are a, a brew pub, which some people, it's like, I expect a tap room, maybe there's a food truck outside, but we've got the kitchen there for you. And it's a full kitchen, we've got an expansive menu, so it's 
So it's really, in some ways, more of a restaurant, and uh, the brewery is a sidelight. I don't think of it that way, of course. So for some people, like the brewery is the big highlight. They come in, they're like surprised. There's food here. Oh my god! But we've got you know the banquet room. We've got a huge patio space, but a full kitchen, also a full bar. Which you know, if you're uh, in this state, a brewery doesn't have the booze and doesn't have the wine. So if your non-beer drinking friends want to come join you, that's cool too. We got a great wine list, cocktails for days. So we're really a restaurant with a brewery problem or solution. So what do you currently have on tap if someone wanted to come in and visit? Well, I, you know, we have 23 beers on tap, so I'm going to miss a couple here. What are the highlights? <laughs> Just give us the highlights. <laughs> I'm gonna Recommendations. Tell you, how about this? The new ones, because we have a lot of staple beers, but we have a lot of seasonal rotators. So right now we're in high summer season, so that means, you know, Whippoorwill is our wit beer. It's a classic Belgian wit. You know, orange peel, coriander, light, refreshing wheat beer. We've got our hibiscus saison, just like it says. It's a Belgian farmhouse sale. Hibiscus in there as well. Again, very super crushable. We got a new beer called Thingama Juicy. Everyone's doing the Northeast IPA style. We decided to go a different route. It's not that hazy. Not going for haze, we're going for flavor. So what we did is married up a juicy IPA with a saison. And so it's got a really, really dry finish with a really bright kind of citrus juicy highlight up front. It is great. Not crazy bitterness, but it's got like 40 IBUs with aroma for days. I can't stop drinking it. That, Sorry. That sounds like it's right, <laughs> right up our alley at the um, podcast. And of course, you know, you can't ignore the other guys in the spectrum. So we also have our bourbon barrel max stout, which is our Russian Imperial. Because, you know, summertime, bourbon barrel max, that's what you want. Of course. No. Absolutely. Uh, people who, what I like to think is anyone who walks through our doors at Vintage, if they came for a beer, we're going to take care of them. And there's a multitude of beer flavors out there. So I came in for a wheat beer. I came in for a Belgian. I came in for a dark beer. I want barrel aged. You're always going to find it at, at Vintage, for sure. It's like a chef's got to think about every flavor that comes in the door. They wanted a sausage. They wanted chicken. They wanted something highfalutin, you know, cassoulet or something. Those are the kind of uh, things we have to go through as the brewmasters, I think, to make it interesting and it keep evolving. In the brew pub world, you got to keep up in your game or, or you know, they're coming at you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, hey, thanks so much for talking with us, Scott. No and we, we absolutely can't wait to come out to the brewery and get a full interview. Please with you. do, man. Can't awesome. wait for it. Cheers, absolutely. guys. Cheers. Cheers. Thank Cheers. you. All right, this is Seuss along with my buddy Jimbo and Alex for Tap Takeover Podcast. And we got a little bit of a treat here. We got a little two for with uh, Russ Klisch from uh, Lakefront Brewery and Henry Schwartz from uh, Mobcraft. Say hi, guys. How you doing? Hello. So, what do you guys think about Wisconsin Beer Fest so far? It was great. A lot of great people out here, a lot of great food. This is also the best food and beer festival in the state. Hot, hot. It's hot and sweaty. It's Wisconsin <laughs> and it's June. But the beer festival is lovely, the people are awesome, and the beer is flowing lovely. Oh, we got a little cameo. We got Terrence in the house. What do you think oh, about Terrence the, in the house? What, what do you think about the Wisconsin Beer Fest so far, man? Uh, this is my third year doing it, and every year it seems to get bigger and bigger, and people love it. Uh, there's more breweries here than before, and that's a good thing. So, Terrence, your beer was one of the most popular my turns. How do you handle the fame? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was three years ago. Uh, <laughs> At, back You're in 2013, I didn't know how to handle it, but I do now. <laughs> no, I just want hey, this guy, Russ Klisch, he's a, he's a great company. He treats his employees well, and the My Turn series is probably one of the greatest things that will happen to the people that employ us. So. Well, speaking of My Turn, you got Dylan here. Yeah, Dylan speak, Yeah, speak a little bit about that. Oh, yeah, uh, Dylan made a Dortmunder. It's a uh, German-style beer. For those who are not familiar, uh, there's a city in, in Germany called Dortmunder, and, and, it, and that's where they brew it, obviously. And it, it's a lighter-style uh, ale and, and uh, a little bit of caramel malt in there. It's a good summer beer. Yeah. And actually, Henry, i got to tell you, like I told you before, I've talked to a couple of people, and they actually said the Batch of Crazy was their favorite beer today. So can you speak about a little bit about that variant? It was a little bit different today, right? Sure. Um, every time we make beers at this new brewery, we've only been open for a year at our Milwaukee spot. So we probably brewed Batch of Crazy four or five times. So it's always adjusting, trying to get the perfect amount of coffee, the perfect way to add it, the right blend. Um, we're using Valentine coffee, so a nice two different roasts, one of their light roasts, one of their dark roasts. So you get a lot of aroma from the dark roast, from the light roast. You get a lot of flavor from the dark roast. So combining those two really gives you a whole whole coffee, punches you left, right, up, down. You know, <laughs> So it's a nice little brown ale with that coffee in it. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, the favorite for the Tap Takeover podcast today was actually the, uh, the hazelnut uh, bourbon barrel aged. Uh, can you tell oh, us yes. a little bit All about right. that one? 
Um, so Aunt Hazel uh, was submitted by a guy named Leo. He's from down in Chicago. And him and his wife are from Russia, and they baked with Nutella all the time when they were kids. And so he's always wanted his hazelnut beer, and he pitched a bunch of breweries down in Chicago. They're like, you make a hazelnut beer, and nobody ever did. So then he learned about Mobcraft, submitted it to our website. It ended up winning, aged in those Elijah Craig 12-year bourbon barrels for a while. And we ended up using this hazelnut meal. It took a lot of experimenting, because like whole hazelnuts, if you crush them and grind them, you get a lot of oil out of it. Hazelnut extract obviously tastes like burnt popcorn and crap, so we didn't want to use that. But we found the hazelnut meal from the Oregon Hazelnut Growers Association. I don't know how Andrew figures this stuff out. But that's what we ended up with. So, like, a lot of the hazelnut oil was extracted already. And so we were able to not have as much, like, oily, filmily up on the top and still get a really nice little bit of head on the beer. And that hazelnut flavor as it warms up, oh, just a bouquet. So tell us about El Wisco. It's one of my favorite beers. And is that coming back every year? Well, uh, definitely coming back for next summer. We'll see how it goes after that. But but it is our most successful summer seasonal so far. And so it's great. It it's, um, has a special Mexican lager yeast that we have. Obviously, it's, it's um, similar to the Mexican beers. Uh, lighter in flavor, a little bit of corn in there. And uh, everybody's loving it. So, uh, Russ, we were able to uh, tap for our listeners today. Uh, as a special treat, we were able to tap the 2016 Black Friday oh, wow. uh, Black Friday bourbon barrel aged uh, Imperial Stout. Any any plans for uh, for this year's Black Friday? Anything you can tell our yeah, listeners? Yeah, we, we've already brewed it. It's been sitting in rye barrels this year, so it's a little bit different. So we'll Breaking have that. news! Breaking news! So we we'll have it there, and then and unbeknown to me, my head brewers have been squirreling away some barrels every year. So we're gonna <laughs> so we're gonna combine <laughs> all of them. They'd be like the triple X version of Black oh, Friday. Oh, and then we're gonna have a uh, blended Black started? Friday yeah. from a couple last How do we years? get in wow. that VIP wow. line? Yeah. Henry um, and I want to know. <laughs> well, anyway, there'll be, there'll, there'll be so there'll be four beers being uh, issued instead of three beers this year. I mean, you, know, you can buy it's three. Five, you can buy three of the regular Black Friday plus one of the other Triple X. Wow! Hey, extra, you, extra. You heard it here about first. It. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Henry, you started out in the House of Brews, yeah. and now Dead Bird Brewery is, who also started out in House of Brews, is now in the house of Mobcraft. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tell us all about that. Um, so they're gonna brew a couple batches of beer with us. Uh, we've got our bottling line over there, and um, they were able, able to do draft batches at House of Brews, and they were doing the 10 barrel batches. They wanted to make a little bit bigger batch size and then put it into 22 ounce bombers. So they're gonna brew four batches of beer over at our place every year. So Russ, I, I gotta know, how was the effort to rebrand? How What are the initial reactions to it? It's been positive. Everybody says I think they're probably afraid to come up to me and say they look like shit or something. But um, but anyways, everybody I think sincerely uh, has come up. We have a lot of unsolicited testimonials of people saying, "I love your branding." It's like you know if they didn't really like it. They wouldn't be saying that. So I appreciate it. sales have been good. Uh, I know they said that once you rebrand, you look at it, you should be doing it like every three years, five years, depending on how much you want to do. But um, but so far, you know, uh, sales numbers are up, and so I think that's the uh, the consumers have voted. And those can the River West cans are awesome. Yeah, and seeing the bus, the bus drive down the street, I saw you guys got a new bus wrap on all the buses with like yeah. all the bottles across it. That's I know. awesome. It is. It <laughs> is like, fun. There's a brewery in Milwaukee that has like how many buses are there? At least two. At least two. Okay, well they must both go through Walker's Point because I see them all the <laughs> yeah, time. Like, it's like, like oh, like Lake Run buses. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> And we're actually, like we said, very lucky to have you two here, friends of the show. So since the last interview, and by the way, go download those if you have not, <laughs> what have you been up to at the brewery? I know you got your a lot of stuff going on. Can you just tell us, besides Black Friday, what else you got going on for the rest of the summer and the rest of the year? From beer standpoint, we're going to have our next, um, we're going to have a come up with our shop series. We used to have our smash series, and so that single malt and single hop. But we felt it would be kind of boring just to have always a single malt. So we publish what we call shop series, which is single hop. And then we might have multiple malts that go into it. So these are where the last one coming out, right, the whole melon will be the last one of those. Then we'll have like four or five at least of these shop series where we concentrate in one hop and then various malts that go in there. Excellent. Henry, what about you? Uh, we got a series of Berliner Weiss style beers coming out. They're called Roundabout. We've got a pineapple and a raspberry version that are uh, bottle conditioning right now. So those are going to be probably the end, middle to end of July that those hit the ground running. And my most exciting, yes. getting married in August. Yes. It's going to be pretty fun. Oh. Yep. So we, um, we've got a... 
Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's a surprise bachelor party. So Lisa and I um, are putting together a raspberry ginger Kolsch. That's going to be our wedding awesome. beer, and That's it's going to be at the tap room as well. And then we've got the Berliner Weiss also aging on raspberry ginger. And we're going to do uh, this little sneak peek people don't know yet. Okay. We're going to tap a firkin on the wet on the, the Grand March. Wow. So tap a firkin on the way in. Yeah. It'll be great. Uh, that raspberry ginger uh, Berliner Weiss. So. Well, we at the Tap I mean, Takeover podcast, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll wait for our invites to the, to the wedding. Yeah, absolutely. I have cash in envelope for you <laughs> for that invite. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you guys so much. It, it's hey, a, it's an amazing privilege to speak with uh, the person who was in on our very first interview and our very third interview. Thank you guys for, for helping out the Tap Takeover podcast when we were just getting started. No problem. Anytime. Okay. Thanks for spreading the word about awesome Wisconsin beers. Yes. Definitely love it because we got so many fun breweries in this state and um, supporting local beer is what it's all about. That's it. Cool. Thanks, Cheers. guys. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.